as promised, I am back to discuss the state of play that just happened, kind of. Um, we're going to be discussing the state of play, breaking it down, getting into the weeds. Of course, as a reminder, the regular episode is up. I split them up because the editing and it would have made the show late, so I don't want to do that, blah, 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 etc. So... This is the State of Play video, breaking it down. We're going to be discussing, talking about everything that was shown off and what I thought about it. And of course, let's hope we discuss what you're thinking about this as well. If you have uh, any thoughts on anything that was shown, uh, anything that you might have a problem with, with what I've said, comments below. I answer them all. And then, of course, tweet at me at UVM9000. I, I want to thank everyone for coming today. And we're going to be talking about the State of Play. So let's just jump into it. I don't really want to dilly dally. Let's talk about the State of Play. So they opened with Concord. This is, of course, the 5v5 shooter. Uh, I gotta say, I'm mixed on this. So Concord looks great. But it's funny that we get that whole kind of sh short story spiel. I mean, what was that? Ten? I mean, mi I mean that was millions of dollars uh, to make that little thing we just watched. And... Oh, my cat's here. And... We get ten t t this thing that lasts, frankly, way too long. And the problem is we know what Concord is, so we know none of this matters because, like, you're not going to be playing a story. I understand they said there's going to be, like, a new little cinematic every week, which, what are they, two, two, two to five minutes? And how long will that last? I don't know, but... They did say it was going to be a reoccurring story uh, of of these like group of people similar to what kind of Apex start has started doing, but this seems like way more in that in the direction of like trying to make it like a cinematic story alongside this hero shooter that you're playing. And I gotta say, I it looks cool. I think it looks great. Actually, it's just was this the way you demo that? I don't think so. I don't think you show this kind of thing trying to trick people into thinking, oh, look, it's a PlayStation Studio game still. Because that's clearly what they were doing. They're, they were trying to make everyone think like, you know, we get it, PlayStation Studios, you know, you like your your stories. So here you go. Here's a story, and it'll still be the shooter. And I just don't think it was displayed well enough, or at least it should not have been that long. Because I, I, by the end of it, I was like, well, I know this is Concord, and I know none of this matters, so why do I care about this, like, little adventure they're going on? It was fun. It was cool. It was beautiful looking, too. I love how unique and cool everyone looks. Everyone looks so different than what you expect. I am very happy that it isn't, like, the default you know, Fortnite look or any, it doesn't look overwatch. You like, it looks like its own thing. And I love that. I think the art style and art direction is beautiful, but seeing it this way, I want, you know, I feel like I, we should have just saw more of the actual game than spending. I mean, what was that? Nearly 10 minutes maybe on just like the story, which, you know, I'll be shocked if there's that many people like tuning in to see the story update because they probably just want to play the game, right? Is there like I know Fortnite and Apex and you know they have these kind of stories, but like people aren't logging in to see like what's the new update to the story. They're they're playing the game and then the story is kind of like the thing they experience on the back end of kind of their excitement for everything. So that's kind of my thoughts on on concord i'm gonna head over and each game that i feel like is interesting or we should at least take a second to talk about i'll go over to the playstation blog of course each game pretty much has like a full post and uh we'll kind of i'll kind of like pull things out that i think is uh kind of interesting um like where is it yeah so here it is a little little subset of it just in case you know you miss something in concord you play as the crew of the north star group of guns for hire known in our galaxy as free gunners the free gunners roam the stars taking high stakes jobs on worlds across wild space where they face other fiercely competitive free gunner crews from match to match you'll form your team of free gunners with other players and battle it out with rival crews who take home the reward across a variety of maps and modes and then they go on to pretty much describe, hey, this is the FPS that we wanted to make. We wanted to make a 
very unique and feeling one, right? Here's another excerpt from Powerful Mystics and Tiring Robots to Skilled Gunslingers and Snappers. When each free gunner's personality and gameplay abilities come alive in every element of how they play and the strategic considerations they create. I think these are... I think this is where the meat actually is, and there probably should have been an inverse of that or, or something, or maybe half and half. I don't know. I think we just focused too much. I think we should have saw more abilities, more, hey, this is what makes us unique. We're not just the Overwatch clone. We are, and I'm not saying they are that, but a lot of people will see 5v5 and think, oh, it's like Overwatch. It's like, you know, and it is, but how do you differentiate that i think they do that well with the visual style of it but i would i want to see more more of uh, more of the actual gameplay but i think it does look good uh the game says concord will have a roster or sorry the blog says concord will have a roster of 16 distinct free gunners to learn and master and notice our crew will grow over time through regular free post-launch updates that introduce new playable free gunners maps modes cinematic vignettes and more uh i will say uh, there, they did say beginning next week, we'll show more details about Concord's additions for PS5 and PC and launch pre orders. So, I do not think this is free. I think you are buying this, which I think is good. We have enough free to play things, we have enough things trying to constantly get you back in. Uh, we see with Helldiver's recent success that we do not need to be free to play all the time, right? That is the antithesis of the argument. Why is it not free to play? We need to move away from that knowledge, I believe. Not everything needs to be free to play. And I think Sony specifically does not want to make something free to play. I think they need the rips on the money. They need to sell each unit to then fuel this kind of being onward and not inundated with cosmetics, right? Why does Helldivers not bother you with cosmetics? It's because they made the money when you bought the game, right? So let's move away from that. I'm hoping that they're, you know, they mentioned pre-orders at the end there. This is going to be a game you pay for, wild, I know. And we move on. Maybe, and maybe this isn't a game that lasts forever. I don't think Helldivers 2 will be a game that lasts forever. I think it will be a game that lasts three to four to five years, and then they work on either a sequel or another game. I think that's okay. And I think that's actually what... PlayStation in their situation would probably want. I know they're probably looking for that Fortnite. This is actually something that might be an Overwatch where it does actually have legs and they can kind of make this a little community. I know Evo isn't the same thing, but, you know, they have Evo in places that they could make where they could make some sort of competitive thing uh, be more and more of a big deal, I guess I should say. I think that's everything I want to say on Concord. The beta is in July. It launches August 23rd very soon. Get excited uh, if you like. I I will be probably checking it out. It looks fun. I don't have a lot of PlayStation friends as I mainly play on Xbox. So maybe I won't. Uh, Helldivers was a slap in the face where it's like, you know, I kind of have to like reach out to people. Hey, you want to play? You know, and they're just they're not PlayStation people. So it's, it's hard to get a group going. And, you know, eventually you just kind of abandon it. So I probably actually won't check it out. Maybe I will. Who knows? We'll see. We will see next up. God of War Ragnarok, the PC port, announced finally September 19th. Uh, this isn't anything shocking. This includes Valhalla. Uh, I don't think I need to really say much else about this. It looks cool. I love it. It's coming to PC. Get it, uh, get excited if you've been waiting for this game. You do get Valhalla and all these things. You pretty much get everything at no additional cost, so you're buying a kind of complete version, in quotes. Uh, so, cool. Dynasty Warriors origins that's coming in 2025 we didn't really see much of this and i don't even think the blog post has that much uh i used to play all of the dynasty warrior games when i was uh kind of you know kind of preteen to to early teenager years I played like a bunch of them i mean i'm talking one two three four five six seven and i think i stopped after seven something like that uh, and i played some of the uh strategy games the um i forget the name of right now but i played those too and loved those a lot uh, and uh, let's read a couple snippets. I don't think there's too much here, but you know, let's let's get it to, uh, just in case you don't know what Dynasty Warriors is, because the trailer told you a little bit, but not a lot. Of course, Dynasty Warriors is pretty famous for being that hack, hack and slash, kill like a thousand enemies, blah blah blah, kind of thing. So, Dynasty Warriors Origins releases the largest armies ever seen in the series, while also introducing a new hero to the exhilarating one v thousand action that made the franchise famous. 
And then the, of course, announcement trailer was then leaked. We're going to go down, though. Dynasty Warriors Origins is being developed by the fans of Omega Force, of course. A team that has posed for a fresh start with this game, complete with a new logo. And we're out to prove with Origins that we're not only going back to our hack and slash roots, but the type of action our fans crave. And we're here to redefine expectations. I'm certain that in this game, we will deliver a most excellent experience that we were not able to accomplish in the series until now. Carving out a new history for both Dynasty Warriors and Omega Force. They go on to discuss, you know, ever since Dynasty Warriors 2, this is kind of like how we've wanted to have this kind of battle feel. That's why you saw like like hundreds of, of things on the screen attacking all at once. It's really going to feel like a, a thing. I will, I am interested. I'm going to read this thing at the bottom. So an, orig an original protagonist appears. If you don't know, Dynasty Warriors is loosely, of course, based on the... Uh, three kingdom saga of Chinese history. If you want to read about that, uh, you can. It is based on a book as well, but I think it's the book is based on real events, something something like around that. Because so, I think it's the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which is a book. Was that was then based off of the actual Three Kingdoms saga? I'm pretty sure I nailed that. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comments. But that's not all. It's the first time in Dynasty Warriors franchise history we would take the chaos of the Three Kingdoms from the eyes of a nameless hero, play through the historical tale of war through the eyes of our new protagonists, showcasing the vast land of China and its timeless soldiers and generals like never before. Stay tuned for more information, blah, blah, blah. It releases in 2025. Now, like I said, not much here. Oh, something we'd actually get a little bit more on the protagonist. Is this someone we're making? Is this someone that looks like that? And that's just what he looks like? I'm not really sure. But we'll see. We'll see when it comes. Sorry about that. I accidentally closed out the PlayStation blog post, so I got to actually reopen it. There we go. Now, next up, we have Infinity Nikki. I don't this. This was this was strange. I'm pretty sure this is a game where it's like looks like you're like taking pictures of, of people or something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's titled it, Open world dress up adventure game coming to PlayStation 5 beta test due out later this year. Uh, and they said like Q3, I think, is when the game might come out. Uh, and then you get you get new outfits. It looks like you just uh, taking pictures. I don't have much to add to this. Clearly not for me. Excited for people who like it. But I think um, I don't think I have anything to add to this. So we'll go move on. We're going to move on to the Ballad of Antara. Which looks pretty cool. It actually visually looks very impressive. looks like you had, you know, that's the one with the little kid on his back. And he was like kind of going through like this kind of maybe soulscape. Very reminiscent of maybe something like Lords of the Fallen. Of course, seeing it, I got very Dark Souls kind of art from it, especially with the enemy designs. Now, let's let's get some experts here. Um, excerpts here. So from this new IP, we set out to create a vast world, both geological scale and cultural variation. In the normal version of the world, common folks reside in another version of the world. Peculiar sightings and encounters await. We call this unimaginable part of the world para. Fundamental essences of the living world are taken away and trapped inside the para from the evasion of an ancient force. And that's where our story begins. And here we go. Yeah, you'll experience an adventure of two intertwined fates through exotic landscapes. For each new destination you travel to, you will explore a handcrafted gameplay space with intricate exploration-oriented level design. Each destination has its own unique para, so unique essence is taken away with drastically different biomes, stories, he heroes, and adversaries. So it looks like very similar to the newest Lords of the Fallen. You have a regular world, and you have the para world. They actually have two examples up here, so it looks like kind of like a tree flower thing that hasn't bloomed and then the par par world is fully bloomed it, it it looks cool we didn't really get a full sense of of how the game was gonna play it looks like you have a little companion with you uh that's maybe your daughter or something uh that's cool it's described as an action alt uh rpg with multiple playable characters these characters possess the power to traverse the two worlds of normalcy and unimaginable we call them emissaries. Each emissary has their own unique class, gameplay capabilities, and their own enticing, mysterious stories we want to tell. So it looks like you're not switching the characters. The, the characters are the different classes you're playing as. And it's a single-player narrative, and it does offer multiplayer support for up to three people, so most likely you can have them tag alongside you when you're facing yeah. So story, exploration, and then the, the designs of the dungeons, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Looks cool. I think it looks very fun, actually. I'll be checking it out. Did not get a date, I'm pretty sure. Uh, almost positive about that. 
Let me actually, you know what? I don't want to go away yet. Let me double check. It, yeah, we did not. It's just 2025. Just 2025. So I'm looking forward to it, but not much else to add. Next up is VR game Behemoth for this coming out fall 2024. Uh, eh, you know, not a VR guy. Looks cool. Looks cool for a VR game. Um, it was uh, very unique when I saw like a like, like someone fell forward and like the guy cut off half of his head. Uh, that was pretty gnarly uh other than that it looks like it's trying to be this kind of you know it's showing off like the vastness like look how big things are and you know you can I, maybe scale them or do things to fight them i'm not really sure oh my camera what's my intention um other than that i i'm i, don't, I have nothing else to add I'm, I'm gonna move on next up alien rogue incursion i think we knew about this i'm, I'm pretty sure this kind of leaked prior or or something of like this but uh, it's a new action horror game in the Alien universe. It's coming to PSVR 2 holiday of this year. Nothing for me really to add. It looks like an alien, you know, you have you exact you know exactly what it is upon reading that. It looks like you're going to be in the alien world in VR, very creepy, very cool looking. Uh if I had a VR, definitely would buy it, but I do not. Next up, the Marvel Rivals PC port was announced. There's going to be a beta in July. So I expect this to be out pretty soon after that close. Oh, it looks like a closed beta test uh, actually is for July. I thought it was going to be an open beta test. That is a closed beta test. Of course, we're in the theming of Overwatch style games. Well, here we are with a very, very Overwatch game in the styles of Marvel. Uh, I have actually heard very good things from the closed beta test they had on the PC side of things. Lots of clips in these things. I, um, I guess they were a lot of show clips from it, but so it doesn't feel closed, but whatever. So lots of clips are shown. Looks cool. Looks like exactly what you would expect, but it was actually well designed. They did announce a PlayStation exclusive Scarlet Spider outfit for Spider-Man. Of course, uh, makes sense because uh, you know the Spider-Man for PlayStation. That's why they got you know wanted to get an exclusive skin there. I will probably try this out. This looks very fun. I know people are probably getting tired of Marvel. I get it. Uh, but as a fan, since I was a small child, this is kind of what I've always wanted. So I'll be playing it. Looks very cool. Oh, my cat is rubbing herself on the chair because I bet she wants pets. She's probably annoyed that I'm doing this and not petting her. Next up, Where Wins Meet. This is probably what we got the least most about in all of the games, I would say. It's not really even clear what it is. So. Uh, let's do a little bit of the experts here. Uh, your character might use the magical power of, oh God, Queen Gong, Queen Gong. I think, I think I, to run up sheer cliffs or across the shimmering surface of water at high speed, or use the power of chi to send enemies from a distance or grasp objectives and far out of reach. Martial arts skills can also be acquired from observing and mimicking the behavior of animals. Breathe fire like a dragon, leap like a giant toad or roar like a lion. All skills can be proved. All, all skills that can prove incredibly useful uh, when faced with an array of foes, whether human or maybe with that giant bear you accidentally provoked. And then here's where it's set. Where Winds Meet is set in the period of Chinese history known as the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms. For us, this historic period offers exciting opportunity because it's a time of great turbulence and change and represents the perfect setting for our young hero to carve their path and discover their destiny. There is, of course, a narrative to unfold and reveal as the game progresses. For example, you will uncover the mystery of your own identity, discover the historical backdrop of this epic adventure, enjoy intriguing encounters with captivating characters, then quite possibly battle with them. But we won't say too much about this now, as it remains to be discovered. And that's pretty much all we're going to say. It, does, it seems like a lot of fluff, to be honest. It looks really, really cool, though. It looks really, really cool. So I cannot wait for this. We don't even have a year for this, I don't believe. Yeah, we don't we don't even have a year for this. So the, the this is just, you know, announced for it will be coming. Um, get excited. This is made by Everstone Studios, which. Do we know them? Everstone. Let's see. I think they're Chinese based, right? Yeah, they're 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 Chinese based studio. So we are slowly getting more and more Chinese based games onto PlayStation. Very exciting. Very exciting because they, you know, have all the initiative projects in these things in certain regions, like India as well. Next up, we have Until Dawn. This is the remaster, remake, whatever you want to call it, of Until Dawn, coming soon, uh, this fall. Coming to PS5 and PC. Very cool. 
Until Dawn was very good. I played it actually relatively recently, last October. Had a great time. Had a great time. No, nothing really to add here. Uh, I think if you wanted to play Until Dawn, I imagine you've played it by now, but maybe you haven't, and this is a whole new release for you. Maybe you got it on the PlayStation 5. I think it's definitely well worth playing. Uh, it's, it's perfect timing if you know it's around October. You play a little spooky season. Uh, even better with a, a spouse, significant other, or a close friend. Uh, I would definitely recommend playing this with them. It is very fun, kind of reacting and 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 at, you know talking out your decision making with each other. Uh, I had a blast playing it with my wife. Next up, Path of Exile Two. This is a very. Yeah, I feel like you see this and you know in like 10 seconds if you want to play this, right? Clearly Diablo inspired uh, Path of Exile 2. I remember Path of Exile 1 being pretty popular. This is coming to PlayStation and they announced uh, Couch Co-op and um, Crossplay as well. And uh, let's talk about some of the features. So Path of Exile features 12 character classes, two for every combination, strength, dex, and intelligence, while each of these class variants focus on different play styles. There's a star boy and you can plan skills, blah, blah, blah. And there's, then they go deeper, deeper. I won't be going into this because they actually go pretty deep into how the game works. So get excited if you are. I will be probably playing this when it fully comes out. Early access was announced for late this year. I'm not interested in early access. I want to play the game. So whenever that comes fully out, I will be right there. Next up, Silent Hill 2 clearly taking the feedback to heart where they said the combat looked bad. I think it actually looks much, much better now. Uh, this game is very strange because I know Blooper Team. Um. Uh, it, this is Blooper Team. Yes, I don't want to be wrong, or or am I thinking of someone else? Yeah, yeah, Blooper Team. Silent Hill Two. It definitely looks much more improved. Uh, Blooper Team said weird things around the last trailer, like they didn't they didn't get to approve it from Konami or something like that. There was like some sort of disagreement. This looked much much better. I am not a Silent Hill Two guy. So I can't really say much. I can't say like, oh, it looks really good compared to the original or it looks better. Or, I mean, obviously it looks good because this was a PS2 game, I believe. So, I mean, I, you know, it looks it looks better than the PS2 game. I'm just saying I can't speak to like, oh, you know, th this happened. This happened uh. So excited. I probably will try this out as long as it works and is made well when it comes out. Uh, don't really have too much else to add. Silent Hill 2. Get excited if you are. Next up. Monster Wilds, Monster Hunter Wilds. That is over here. There it is. I am not a Monster Hunter guy. You'll you'll see a theming, a lot of the state of play. Not for me, uh, but I am excited for people. Monster Hunter Wilds, huge game. It's going to be huge. Uh, so I don't want to, you know, poop on anyone's parade. Get excited if you are. Uh, Monster Hunter Wilds, it looks great. It looks exactly like Monster Hunter. I don't think I need to explain what Monster Hunter is to anyone because uh, it's a very popular series. So I don't think I need to add anything, but it looks great. It, lo it looks like if you like Monster Hunter, you're going to love it. I tried Monster Hunter. Ooh, wow. Not No, not for me, but happy for you out there. Not really much else other than 2025 it is the expected release year. Uh, and yeah, enjoy. Next up, the entire reason I watched this entire state of plays, Astro Bot coming out September 6th. I cannot wait. The trailer looked amazing. It looks like it is pl still PlayStation re reminiscent. It looks like you might be, s and maybe you're saving like the mascots because you they're much more prominent in this. They're showing you Nathan Drake. They're showing you Aloy. They're showing you Kratos. So maybe we're interacting with them this time. Of course, Astrobot has had two games prior, uh, and this is made by Team Asobi, of course, which is which is a a couple remnants of uh, Sony Japan specifically. Or Japan Studios is what it was called. Sorry. So it looks like we're going to be doing something along the lines of maybe helping them because they were shown pretty prominently. If you remember, Astro Rescue Mission was a VR game. It kind of exploded a little bit, um, especially considering it was only a VR game. Then they made Astrobot Playroom, which was the launch in-game added. Or how do I put this? So it was a launch game that was included in your PS5. So if you have a PS5, you have that game. Uh, for free it, you know it was just included as part of the ps5 and it is a fantastic game it is really it is a really great game and i'm speaking for someone who does not like platformers i do not like um platforming as much as the next guy uh i'm not a huge fan of them but this grabbed a hold of me i played so much i even platinum the game even though it's a pretty easy platinum but still you do have to do everything in the game very very excited for this game september 6th will definitely be added to the calendar for this game i can't 
wait to play more of this. I'm curious on how the game is going to play, what it's going to be about. It looks like you're still using the PlayStation to kind of power your way through this thing. It looks like he was in the desert, so maybe like he's like lost or something, and maybe we're finding something while we're there. The boss fights look incredibly detailed and interactable and um, uh, kinetic, and it, everything felt like it had weight. Cannot wait for this game to come out. Can't wait. Very excited. Astrobot, September 6th. Oh, I can't say more. Can't, I cannot say more. Very, very excited. Uh, and that is the state of play. That was your state of play for May, your first kind of half of the year. Pretty much the first time PlayStation has really said like a lot in a while. Of course, we'll be getting a showcase sooner. Looks like showcase still at the end of the year. Doesn't look like we'll get two. It is it's like the rumblings I'm seeing on the rumors. So we might not get a summer showcase, which is strange. But PlayStation uh, selling PS5s without games on them. So why do they care? Don't blame them. Uh, I guess they need to take as much as, as long as they need to to get anything going. So, hey, good for them. Other, So let, let's actually talk about the actual state of play by itself. And I'll give you my thoughts on it. And then we'll, we'll call it for the day. So the state of play, I think it was actually pretty good. It did not have a lot of games for me. However, the way everything was presented was very well. I think the worst game presented, funny enough, was Concord. I do not think it was wise to try and talk people in with this story concept that they're trying to do. I do not think that is wise. I get what they're doing. I think they should do it. But when you're presenting the game to people who do not know, that's just good. you're just confusing people. Because as soon as you go, this game is a 5v5 multi... Boom. You have lost all the people you just spent time getting, so you just wasted a lot of time, I feel like. Uh, so you, and you just could have led with, here's a cool, quicker cinematic. Watch the full one, maybe on YouTube or something, or the full one will be in-game when the game comes out. And then you go from there, go straight into combat, show what we're playing, show various characters, and then announce maybe, hey, we'll have eight deep dives before the beta on the 15 16 characters and then the beta happens and then maybe you have like a big blowout out of all the information leading up to launch i think that would be a much better way of marketing this game i'm not pretending like i know more than they do i'm just trying to say i feel like what their actual mission to do here completely blew up in their face because it just doesn't work i think with what they're trying to do but hey maybe it does maybe it, they'll see some sort of um uptick in sales because they pitched this as like a half of a story kind of game because they don't want to scare off the PlayStation first party people who love the story game. So, you know, maybe maybe that will help. I can't imagine being so into a game that I'm returning every week to see a new cinematic, but then I'm playing a game that has nothing to do with them cinematics. So, for instance, when I was playing Apex, at no point was I coming back to see the new cinematic or story or anything about that. I was just coming back to play Apex, and that was kind of the thing on the side that was happening. So I don't think they really know that no one's going to care about this. But hey, I could be wrong. I do not want to sit here and be like, you know, I'm 100% I'm correct. I'm just feeling like... There's going to be a problem here, but me, it doesn't seem like it kind of moved any people's minds on Twitter, or it doesn't seem like people are really reactive to this. So I don't know. Maybe I'm the crazy one, and you know they nailed it and kicked it out of the park. Maybe I doubt it, but hey, I think King Concord is actually the weakest part of this. Everything else I think was actually shown pretty well. Uh, I got to be honest, I don't know. And and you know what? I, I shouldn't say this. I, I just, I feel like the only thing that, that didn't really feel like it should have been there was Infinity Nikki. But hey, maybe someone out there is like, oh my God, like I love dressing up and, and you know, doing photo mode stuff. There you go. I mean, maybe you'll like that. But I, that's kind of the two points of the show where I was like, what is going on? Concord just, I feel like just took too long. It looked, like I said, it looks sick. I'm not saying it doesn't look cool. Just saying, what was the point of showing all that? But hey, next up, um, I want to oh, uh, and I, I wanted to point out things that I'm really excited for the show. Mar Marvel Rivals, I'm gonna be, definitely be trying out. I will try Concord, of course, just to see. Uh, Where Winds Me was very cool. Um, and then uh, there was one more I wanted to 
point out. Um, uh, oh, uh, Path of Exiles 2, I'll, I'll definitely try. Dest- Dynasty Warriors Origins. So there is a lot of games that I actually liked from this. And they showed about, what, 12 games? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 games. 14 games and 30, I think it was 35 minutes or something like that. That's, that's good. I like that pacing. I like that pacing. I just think Concord was just not shown correctly. But that's pretty much all I have to add about this state of play. Like I said, it was good. I love the cadence that they found with the state of plays because it was kind of back and forth if it would be complete and utter garbage or not. I think they need to be wiser with their third party state of plays because that's when they get bad. This was, of course, not a third party one. Um, but it's clear when they were like, this state of play was was made because we had obligations with our publisher or with our publishing partners and um, it, it, with our second party studios. It, it, and we're making this just for that. I feel like those need to be to they, those need to ensure to not come out anymore. And state of plays need to be made more wiser to keep this cadence going keep state of plays becoming the place you go because this one did not feel like a lot of people i don't know it didn't feel like a lot of people watch it It didn't feel like like it had that hit on social media that playstation usually doesn't maybe it's just because they're so quiet maybe it's because it's you know my algorithm i just didn't see it or i wasn't on enough to notice but that's just kind of my two cents on this situation i want to thank everyone for stopping by Thank you for talking about the state play. Thank you for commenting, liking, subscribing, sharing with a friend. I uh, thank everyone for doing anything. And remember, just watching the show is enough for me as well. Um, until the next time, I have been Elijah. And remember, go Chief. <laughs>